Welcome back. I think this is the third video that I'm doing uh, in, a, in the series of uh, videos for Rostov 41. <clears throat> We're halfway through turn five. The Soviets uh, had the last turn or the last section and segment in turn four and then got the back to back with the initiative for die roll for turn five. And uh, it's the first automatic mud turn. Uh, it's been clear up until now. And so that does hamper both sides in terms of their ability to reinforce and things, things like that. One, things, uh, one of the things I do like <clears throat> uh, about this turn track is it gives you a little notation here to let you know that uh, it's, uh, there are reinforcements due for one side or the other saving you uh, having to sort of make notations and keep the order of arrival handy and stuff like that. Also doubles for a weather track and your dates and turns, etc. Now I think what would have been nice to add here, since there are a number of VPs to keep track of, if you saw the first video, I think I walked you through where all the VPs were and how you got them. Uh, what would have been good is to have uh, two counters one with VPs in units and one with VPs in uh, with their times 10 so that we could just keep track of the VPs manually here without having to take notes. Now, I'm not taking notes because <clears throat> I think this game is pretty much designed or structured or set up or the situation was such that uh, the way the VPs are, are allocated, it's going to be pretty hard for the Germans not to be successful in this battle unless I'm massively wrong and something changes significantly in the uh, in the next couple of turns when it comes to the freezing weather and things like that. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I will also note that there are excessive number of DG counters and out of supply counters. I, I guess uh, that's just kind of the standard amount that get, that's put in a game, but you're never gonna use 25 plus DG counters for the Germans, particularly given that a lot of them on the backs are gray as well. Some of these, some of these guys are dual sided, right? Um, <clears throat> just found that odd. I, I would have, you know, give me two counters for VP counting and you don't really need the rest. You could just left them blank or whatever. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, just a, a minor note. Now, uh, so what happened turn four, five, or uh, <clears throat> mainly turn four really, we, uh, the Germans here attempted to knock out this out of supply formation here, failed, <laughs> failed the artillery roll, uh, killed off the final unit here, used the exploit movement to reinforce this artillery. I did consider as an out of supply unit, uh, you, I don't think you can attack. And so I was planning with this unit to attack at one to one and try and knock out that artillery. But I don't think you can attack when you're out of supply in this particular module. I'm just gonna check actually while I move the camera around. Oh, it's half attack strength. So it would have been one, would have been a one to one. That's pretty risky. Let's see what I roll. Yeah, there you go. I roll a five on a one to one, would have been an A1, would have killed the unit. So just as well I didn't. Sitting here ties up at least two units. Right, so that's a good thing. Uh, <clears throat> now, interestingly enough, last turn, uh, the Germans were pretty sneaky and uh, took, they had taken one hex already because they moved a lot faster than I thought they would, and then uh, drove in a little, uh, a little deeper, they actually came around, skirted around, attacked this hex here, this Rostov hex here, and were successful in capturing that, but in the effort to capture it, they, the, the Germans captured this hex and then advanced, right? And left one unit behind. Well, they left too weak a unit behind. And now uh, while they captured the extra hex, they lost this one with a counterattack from here and here. And so now it's gonna be up to the Germans to work out, can they, can they knock out the Russians uh, little Soviet forces here, this mech force, which is the strongest unit on the board for the Soviets. Can we knock that guy out of here? 
And I think this turn, that's not going to be possible. Or maybe it will be, actually. Maybe if I can get this artillery into the game. One, two, three. Yes, I can reach. So we, we, if we can get a good shot on this artillery, even though it's in the city with a, with a, a DRM, I think that'll be okay. So that, what's, that's what went on down in Rostov. So Rostov is, you know, uh, not under control by any one force yet, really. But I think the Germans are going to have this in hand unless a lot of reinforcements come in. Uh, we'll see. Up here in the center of the map, <coughs> excuse me, Krasny Luke, uh, or Luch. This area had several units. We we rolled the, all of those units up, uh, bar that one. Uh, these two CAV units managed to escape, even though they were in zones of control and all the rest of it. So that was pretty nifty. And then over here, uh, the you know forward defense of the Germans has proved to be a wise move for the moment. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward from there, though. And uh, you know they're probably going to need a little bit of reinforcement. If more Soviet forces pile in here, they could end up getting some one-to-one, -one, two-to-one attacks that might prove to be dangerous and uh, put us in a sticky situation with VP counts here. Uh, okay, that's, that's all I really wanted to do, just give you a quick little update, see how things are going. It's pretty fast and furious gameplay. It, it, it's, it's slick and quick to play. Uh, you know, is what it is, SES. So we'll talk soon. Ciao.